and I'm real, you know, I'm authentic. And, you know, with her, I, you know, I just can't have a conversation because I feel like everything about her is, is like a lie. Mm-hmm. So I have a problem with that. Alexia, I am so excited to take this trip with you to Thailand. I watched the first three episodes and wow, you guys do not disappoint. I mean, so what, were your, <laughs> what was your first impressions of the cast going into this? Um, I was excited to meet all the girls. I loved that Potomac was going to be there and Salt Lake City and Miami and um, Portia and Leah as well. So actually, I was really excited. I had just come off of our season five. We had just wrapped it up. So I was looking for something refreshing. I was looking to have fun. And I I was excited that it was going to be something different from a regular season. Definitely. Were you hesitant about joining uh, the Ultimate Girls Trip at all? No, I really wasn't. I was excited because I knew that it was, you know, a fun trip. You know, of course, with that comes a little bit of drama and some other things. But I was really um, honored, actually, to even have, you know, some kind of presence, you know, for Miami to be there and to represent. And I was excited to meet all the, the the rest of the ladies. Yeah. Going into it, who were you expecting to cause the most drama? Hmm. You know, I didn't really go in. I had heard different things, you know. I mean, no disrespect, but I really don't watch a lot of TV and hadn't watched the ladies on their shows. So I was going in with like an open mind, an open heart. I really didn't want to judge anybody by their season or by their franchise. So I was just, you know, just willing to make friends with everyone and just be open, you know, for everyone. Yeah, I believe in the first episode, you play a game of like best and worst uh, housewives from like the first like meeting. After the show, who was your best? Who was your worst? Okay, so I'll start with the worst. (laughs) I think it was just Leah. Mm. And, you know, I felt that I didn't like the energy she brought into into the um, into the trip. Mm-hmm. And um, I think my best, I have so many bests. I mean, mm-hmm. I really, you know, loved Giselle and Portia and Heather and Whitney and Candace. I mean, I liked all of them. I mean, even Leah, you know, I just wish she would have been a little bit more, um, more warm, you know, and more like accepting and, you know, just made a little bit more of an effort. Yeah. You know, I mean, she, she doesn't say the same thing about me, but yeah. Right. Well, I mean, you, you know, you're talking about you're at at a dinner, you're talking about your previous marriage and like you're telling your story. And she said it was a snooze fest and it was boring. What was kind of your reaction to that? Um, I I thought it was a self-reflection of herself Mm -hmm. because she came into the group, you know, being the snooze fest and the boring and just kind of like just calling attention in a negative way. Mm -hmm. So I was actually surprised because, you know, there's nothing boring about my story. No, definitely. And all the ladies wanted to hear, you know, just ask a lot of questions and you, know, you can take it like the wrong way or the good way. I decided to take it in, in a good way because we only have like seven or eight days to get to know each other. So, you know, I like that she jumps, you know, straight to the point and she asks the questions that she wants to know. Yeah. Le- Leah also said that when you speak, it sounds like you're reading a script and that you suck the air out of the room. I mean, would you say oh, she said that? <laughs> yeah. Would Actually, you no, that? I think I'm super real. I don't think I have anything rehearsed or any kind of script. If not, I would be in Hollywood making movies. <laughs> so, no, I mean, I, I disagree with her, but maybe it sounded like that to her because she's heard the story so many times. So, you know, I guess like in her ear, that's what she was listening to. Yeah. Did things, did she warm up a little bit as the trip went on or did she kind of have this wall up a little bit? And she, you know, Giselle made it seem like Leah just wanted you all to get drunk and be more entertaining. Did you feel that as well? (laughs) Um, I don't know. I thought maybe she was even jealous that we were getting drunk and, and, you know, she wasn't drinking and, you know, I respect that and I applaud that for her. But just because, you know, she's not OK, you know, she doesn't want to do it doesn't mean that she had to, like, mess it up for us. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that's like how I felt about her. Yeah. Would you go on another trip with her if they asked? <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm always hopeful. So I'm hoping that she learned, you know, from that trip and um, that she next trip, you know, she'll come along and have some fun. Yeah. Whether You're, we're drinking or not. I mean, I think everybody like, you know, you can have fun. It doesn't really, de- you know, depend on your liquor. And I think like her mindset was like that. Mm-hmm. And um, and it was just very unfortunate that she got sick. So, you know, I was really concerned about her. And you, you can see because, you know, I've dealt with sicknesses before and emergency situations. Mm-hmm. So I felt really bad for her. I think, you know, that also kind of, um, you know, deducted like two or three days while she was, you know, not feeling well. Mm-hmm. So it was just, you know, she had like a lot of things going against her, I guess. Right. On you know, this trip. 
you take you take this trip with one of your best friends, Marisol. How did going into an Ultimate Girls Trip environment did that change your relationship at all, or did it make it stronger, or did or, did, or was there ever more tension between the two of you? You know, I think we had a little tension towards the end. You know, we started off so excited, you know, to be traveling together, you know, so far away, and we needed a break, you know, after we had wrapped up our season. So, you know, we just wanted to have fun. You know, we wanted to visit beautiful Thailand. We wanted to get together with the other girls. We just, that's what we had in mind. Mm -hmm. But of course, after sharing a room with her, I was the only one that literally shared a room for all those days with her, sharing the same bathroom. And just, I guess, being together, I think we got on each other's nerves. Right, yeah, you needed a break after this. <laughs> you know, it's like sisters, right? Like we fight like sisters, we love like sisters. And even though we love each other, you know, after spending 13 days, you know, day and night with that person, it's kind of like, uh, we're getting on each other's nerves. Everybody needs a break after that. Did you tell everybody that she had a fake marriage though and that she should go on pill? No, I mean, I didn't say it's not fake marriage because I never, those words never came out of my mouth. But, you know, as a friend, when she did get married um, to Steve, she, I found out by an article that came out on page six that like our real friends here in Miami shared with me. I didn't even know. My friends here in Miami like said like, did you know that Marisol got married? I'm like, that's impossible. She was in Tulum celebrating her boyfriend's um, birthday. Right. So I think it's something I had inside, you know, that hurt me because as a friend, I thought she would want to share that happiness and that joy in that moment with me. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I found out by page six. So in my mind, it was something like she had plans, but she didn't trust to tell me, you know, she says it was spontaneous, but her marriage is very real. And she's, you know, very, they're both very lucky. They found each other because they're great together. I love Steve and I'm very happy for Marisol. You know, you wish, you know, your best friend, you know, the best. So, um, but yeah, but that, you see, that's something that transferred from our season five. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, yeah. so I think we all come into this trip with like a backstory, mm -hmm. just like, you know, Heather and, and, and Whitney, had a very difficult season you know Giselle and Candace mm -hmm. and Marisol and I had a good season because we love each other and there's no show and there's no nothing and you know that's going to break us or it's going to affect our friendship but it was kind of like in my heart and it was in her heart as well that I had said you know that she was not married legally like that's what I was saying you know it's a spiritual ceremony which has the same weight you know in my eyes as a legal marriage mm -hmm. but Deep inside, I've, I was always really bothered by that. So I think having a moment like this on our trip, I kind of got everything out, out of my chest, off my chest, and so did she. And we talked about it when we came back from Miami. We talked about, about it a little bit more, you know, calmly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she acknowledged how I felt in my feelings, and I acknowledged that I had hurt her, and I said, you know, I was sorry, you know, for doing that because those were never my intentions. But I was, I was hurt by, you know, finding out from a newspaper article. Right. No, definitely. Well, I'm glad you guys are in a better place. And then, you know, it's been a mystery in the Bravo verse about what happened to Heather's black eye. What's your theory on all of this after hearing the stories? Um, I'm confused myself. You know, I know just I wanted to get to the bottom of it. But, you know, I believe that until you're not ready to say something, it's not going to come out. You know, I don't care if you're in a reality show. I don't care if you have pressure. And, you know, Heather is that kind of woman. Like, I want a friend like her because, I mean, she was like taking it to the grave. Like, there was no breaking her where she was going to reveal what really happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, and it wasn't my job to do it. You know what I mean? I was like, I like you. I don't really care what happened, you know, in your season. You know, I'm sorry that you had the black eyes. Somebody punched you. And you know what? You know, you're really brave that you're like not saying who it is. Mm -hmm. And I want you as my friend, because that means you'll keep a secret. Ser seriously. Um, you know, we're seeing the reunion start to play out of Miami right now. How how are you feeling after the part one just aired? And how are, how did you feel after the reunion stopped filming? So, you know, the reunion is very tough mm -hmm. um, to do. And we're going to have a three part reunion. So, you know, you're sitting there for hours and there's so many factors and emotions, you know, um, taking place. And, you know, I feel the reunion is a time that you go and you kind of try to resolve what hasn't been resolved, you know, throughout the, the season. I feel like I made a lot of progress or I made progress with all the ladies because it was never to the point that um, we cannot move forward and we cannot have a friendship except for Adriana because, you know, she really hurt me. And um, and then 
it's not even after the reunion. You know, you feel like after the reunion, it's so heavy that you need like some 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 time to kind of like reflect and just find some peace. And in her case, she really didn't do that. She decided to go like on a press tour and, you know, just continue to bash me and my family and bring things up from the past, which by the way, you'll, you'll have to watch, you know, the rest of the reunion because that was one of the things that I asked her not to do. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, you know, Andy was there and he saw it. He's like, well, what will it take for you and Adriana to move forward? And I said, please stop talking about me and my life. Like talk about your life, your mystery. We don't know anything about your life. So anyways, I, that really disappointed me because I felt like after all, everything that happened in the reunion that she would have some time to reflect and just kind of like, you know, keep it low and just find some peace and reflect and, you know, move on because, you know, eventually we will have another season and I will have to film with this person. So. Right. I mean, what did, I mean, what did you feel about her being in the media calling you <laughs> a bully, you know, um, and, you know, of course, that analogy that she well, I mean, I think it's a deflect. I mean, she, I think she's deflecting because she's the one that shows the history of being a bully and a pattern of being violent. You know, in her previous seasons, you know, she slapped Joanna in the face mm -hmm. in this season. She threw a glass, you know, at Larsa. She picked on Larsa all season, season four. And um, she's the one that has, you know, the history of, you know, of, of, of a bully. I mean, not myself, but I, I really don't. I'm like a nice person. I wish everyone well, but I have a problem with her sitting there and just lying. You know, I think I've, I've always been very vulnerable. I've been very open. You know, when I, you know, when I feel the need to cry, you know, I cry. I'm emotional and I'm real, you know, I'm authentic. And, you know, with her, I, you know, I just can't have a conversation because I feel like everything about her is, is like a lie. Mm -hmm. So I have a problem with that. Do you regret saying that um, Lisa's actions may have caused Lenny to cheat? And uh, what are your thoughts on her new boyfriend? Well, I'm super happy that she has a new boyfriend and she's found somebody to love and respect her and treat her nicely and kind. You know, I feel that that's what she needs, you know, at the moment. You know, she's been through a lot. So, the, you know, the fact that she met this nice man and, you know, they're spending time together and, and you know, she's, he's making her happy. You know, I, I'm very happy for her myself. Yeah. And then finally, uh, what do you think of Larsa's, uh, what do you think of Mar Marcus and Larsa? Um, well, I'm very happy for her too, because, you know, I've, everybody knows I believe in love and I love um, for people to find, you know, I love for women to find that person. And, you know, the only ones that really have to understand it and understand the dynamics of our relationship is them too. It's like Larsa and Marcus, it's Todd and I, Lisa and Lenny or Lisa and Jody. You know, the outside world is always going to have an opinion and they're always going to say something, but they don't know. And I just want them to be happy. And I think that um, Larsa deserves it. So does Lisa. So do I. I mean, even Adriana, but like a real boyfriend, you know, like don't make up a fake story about, you know, a guy that... You know, she she does that like every season, the same thing, mm -hmm. you know, whereas, you know, she was married, you know, legally married to Frederick for so many years. And then she came on season three and, you know, lied to all of us and said that she was having a wedding. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she has a history and a pattern. So, you know, I'm like up to like up to here, like with with all that, you know. So, yeah, you know, I had a moment. I'm very passionate. I'm very explosive. And um, but, you know, when I need to say I'm sorry, when I feel like I've done something wrong, because my intentions are never to hurt anyone. Mm -hmm. And in her case, my intention was never to hurt her about the gentleman that she brought to my wedding party. Right. You know, I told her from a good place. Then she turned everything so that to make me look like a bully and that I was, you know, trying to destroy her relationship, which wasn't a relationship. You know, like it was just it got really ugly, unnecessary. Mm -hmm. You know, because she knew my intentions were always good from the beginning. Like any friend will tell a friend, oh, I heard that he's married. You know, why don't you check it out? In the beginning, she was very receptive about it and she accepted everything. But then after she's like, oh, I can have a moment. You know, I can pick on Alexia. And she brought that guy to disrespect me. And again, I think she should have been more concerned about the guy being so disrespectful and treating women that way than being married. Because, you know, eventually, like, there's a lot of people that are married legally and they're not, no longer in the relationship, whether it's financial reasons or they haven't gone around to it, whatever it may be. But I just think the way that she handled it was really poor. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that I handled it great because I did not scroll all the way down. But my intention, I didn't start the rumor behind her back. You know, she changed the whole story. She changed the whole narrative to try to make me look bad. 
and that's why I'm really hurt. Well, I'm excited to see the rest of the reunion play out, and I'm excited for Ultimate Girls Trip. It's going to be great. Alexia, thank you so much for your time, as always. Thank you, Christina. Take care. For more news content and exclusive interviews, make sure to hit the sub, like, and bell button down below and visit usmagazine.com.